Hey, welcome to Tuesday's episode of On Top and Hot. God, I love trading on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> Actually, any day is a good day to trade. I'm John Zadar, and this is Tuesday. It's April 23rd. Now, what I like to do on this show is just to share my own personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock. I'm out there every day trading penny stocks from bell to bell, looking for stocks under five bucks on any market. And I'm particularly looking for penny stocks that have heat, that have potential to make us money. Well, I found one I want to share with you today, and she's rather interesting. This is AI Inc., ticker L-I-D-R, LIDAR. Now, she's interesting in the fact that she's not very interesting. <laughs> This is kind of weird. I am really following my gut on this one, but my gut's been doing real well this week. Yesterday, we looked at ticker NIVF, and we looked at her warrant. She was in the midst of a merger. Her chart looked pretty good, and they both ran over 100% today. The day before, we looked at AGBA, ticker AGBA, and her warrant. She was involved in a merger with Triller. Still is. She took off. We did good for the last two. This one feels good to me, but there's not as much catalyst and push on this one. Still, I like what I'm feeling. Now, LIDAR is on the major exchange. She finished the day at $1.05 with about 8% gains. Now, being on the major exchange comes with a host of benefits, folks. First off, there's a lot less risk trading stocks on the major exchange. There's a lot of rules and a lot of oversight, so you're not going to put up with all the hokey pokey you put up with on the OTC. Plus, there's a lot more volume and a lot more money up on the major exchange, so you're going to get more liquidity. Plus, you can trade pre-market, after-market. You never get that opportunity with OTC stocks. And did I forget to mention, there are no transaction fees with buying and selling your shares. All transactions are free on the major exchange. So trading penny stocks on the major exchange is great, but there's another benefit. Penny stocks on the major exchange, a lot of them have warrants. This one has a warrant, ticker L-I-D-R-W. Normally there is just a W or W-S at the end of the normal ticker, and that's the warrant. Now what's a warrant? It's stock. Stock you can trade like any other stock. There's no difference, except it comes with an added benefit if you want to use it. It is a promissory note, a coupon, and if you hold it, you can cash it in down the road, anywhere from three to five years down the road, and what it allows you to do is buy a stock at a set price that's cheap. So three, five years down the road, the price is way up here. Your set price is way down here. For every single warrant you cash in, you may be able to buy a stock for a buck and a quarter, and it's going price is 20 bucks. You make all that in profit for every single warrant that you exercise. And that's what makes warrants exciting. People see the value in them down the road. So when there's hot news on a company, the stock may go up 10%, but the warrant might go up 100, 200, 1,000%. Now, we were just looking at the stock's price. It was like a buck five. She was up 8%. The warrant today finished at just a little over a penny and she was up over 60% today. You're looking at eight times as much as the stock made. And that's what happens in a lot of cases. When a stock has a warrant, good news comes out. The warrant goes a heck of a lot farther, a heck of a lot faster than the stock does. And to boot, it does it on less volume. So I always like to watch the warrants. They can make you a lot of money. So let's focus in on the company now. What is LIDAR about? Well, they are about LiDAR. You don't know what LiDAR is. LiDAR is the technology that allows machines the capability of vision so that they can see. That's what we're using our self-driving cars, our robots, and things like that. Well, they tell us down here that AI, together with its subsidiaries, provides LiDAR systems for vehicle autonomy, advanced driver assistance systems, and robotic vision applications here in the United States, Germany, Europe, and Asia. Their technology is called Foresight. I'm going to dive on over here into their website. They've got lots of information over here about their technology, and we're not going to go deep into the technology. That's a lot of information that can take a lot of time, so I'm going to let you do that due diligence. 
Suffice it to say, there are different types of technology being used with LiDAR. You can use holograms, uh, radar, sonar, there's lots of different technologies, and each company that's working with LiDAR has their own hardware and software concoction, and this company has their own as well. They tell us here, we need to clearly see what is around us to safely move through any environment. Radar and cameras have limitations due to weather or darkness or other environmental conditions. LiDAR overcomes these restrictions and measures the exact distance to an object with higher resolution to increase reliability and safety for a wide range of sensor applications. Our solution is different. AI's Foresight Intelligent Sensing Platform with software-definable LiDAR at its core enables our patented bi-static architecture to keep transmit and receive channels separate allowing optimization for both. This allows it to focus on what matters most in the field of view. This is the foundation of the Foresight platform and its products. Now, this isn't just for vehicles. Of course, we're going to be using it in cars and trucks. We're going to be using it on equipment in factories and warehouses like your forklifts and tuggers. There's one company out there called uh, CYN, ticker CYN. They just had news come out today. They make the equipment that goes into factories and warehouses, the forklifts, the tuggers, and other things. And it's all autonomous controlled. Well, they just had news come out today that they had a deal with John Deere to outfit their facilities. Well, they're also going to be using this technology in stable devices. You're going to have robots. You're going to have lawnmowers, vacuum cleaners, cars, all this sort of stuff moving around. But they've got things like, well, I saw a robot for folding clothes. Yes, I did. <laughs> Cost $1,500. It's got arms, and that's all it's got. It sits on the table. You put the clothes in front of it, and it's got arms and eyes. LiDAR. And it can see the clothes, and it folds them, but it never actually moves. In the cities, you're going to be able to use LiDAR for your smart city applications. They're going to be able to do all sorts of things. Just think about this. Traffic lights. Have you ever got stuck at a traffic light at 3 in the morning that's red and there's not a single car coming from anywhere? Why are you sitting there? I bet you've never been more tempted in your life to break the law. Well, that won't happen with smart cities. Or a person's crossing the street. The light won't change too soon before that person's all the way across the street. So there's a lot of advantages here. They tell us that through their software configurable architecture, Foresight LiDAR will deliver optimized and precise solutions for automated tolling, traffic management, highway incident detection, railway crossings, I never thought about that one, and crew safety. This helps prevent accidents, reduce traffic congestion, and increase municipality savings for a safer and more efficient world. All right, let's take a look at the relative volume for the company now. Now, I ain't buying it. I, I looked at this earlier. She had 99,000 shares when I looked at earlier today. It says that she's been doing an average of about a half a million shares and that she's dropped down to 144,000 shares today. Well, I run over to Yahoo and I get the historical information here. This shows you every single day of trading, every single day, what it opened up at, what it closed at, its high, its low, and its volume. I came over here looking at the volume to see why it was so high. Well, it was a full month ago here at March 21st. The last time we were in the millions, we were at 2.8 million. And over that next week, she started to fall. 400 million, 500, 700, 100, and that's it. She barely has touched 100,000 shares for the next three weeks. So the way I see it, her true average is closer to 100,000 over the last three weeks rather than 500,000. So she's doing a little more than her average today at 144,000. That's my perception. Share structure for the company. Well, look at that, folks. The company just did a reverse split back in December of 1 and 30. And this is what we're left with. 6.5 million shares outstanding. I don't know what the float is. That all depends on how many shares the insiders own, the management. I don't know what that is. You can probably find out if you jump into their financial. But in either case, even if they don't own a single share, 
the most our float is going to be is 6.5 million. 10 million constitutes a low float. Now, what does a low float mean to you? Well, think of it this way. If this stock did 10 million shares tomorrow, they only have 6.5 million. That means every single share had to sell plus more. Now you've got a supply and demand problem. You've got more people wanting more shares than there are out there. And that causes the price to go up. It's kind of the equivalent of a short squeeze. You can get a big push on the price. So we like to see low floats. Market cap right now, that is about 6.3 million as well. Taking a look at the financials. Well, that's not all that good, is it? Four years ago, we were at $1.5 million. We know it's millions because we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Four years later, that's right where we're at, even a little less, 1.5 million. But what's really bad here is they've been losing more and more and more money down the road. They actually were in the profits in 2020, about three quarter million. Then they fell to just over a half a million down. Then they were 5 million down. And then at the end of 2023, they were 13, almost $14 million down, which is 10 times the amount of revenues they made. I ain't liking that. Quarterly reports. Oh God, that's even looking worse, isn't it? Year ago, we were over a million. Chunk, 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 chunk. It has just fallen to the ground. We are now down here at $69,000 and it cost them $6.6 .6 million to make $69,000. Something is really wrong with the math here. They need to get AI over here to fix this. Let's take a look at that balance sheet. Oh, they got more money in the bank than I was anticipating. About $17 million. We got to bring those three zeros over here too. Total assets, we're up there at $54 million. Hey, look at that. Liabilities is less than half, about $25 million. So in this deficit generating company, not making any money, we have positive stockholder equity of just over $29 million. Not bad, actually. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company. All right, we've got a form four here. Form four, you should always look at real quick. Just dive into it and see if you see a P or an S in the middle, right there. A P means purchase, an S means sale. Anything else is something else. We're not interested, so we're not interested. If you were, you'd get the name right there, who the person is inside who's buying or selling the shares. And if you're curious, they'll give you a reason for what's going on right there. But we don't have a buy or a sell here. We got an 8K on the 12th. 8Ks are material changes. Come in here and read this headline there. This will tell you if you want to read any more. Change in certifying accountant. Yeah, not something I'm really interested in. So we're going to jump out of that. So that pretty much covers it for our financials. Now let's take a look at that news. It's a coming, I promise. It's a slow load. All right, it took away my highlights, but that's okay. There isn't a whole heck of a lot of news here to read, but there is one piece of news here that came out on March 26th. They tell us here, AI introduces Apollo, the first product in the Foresight Flex family. AI Inc. today announced Apollo, the first product in AI Foresight Flex next generation family of LiDAR sensors. Apollo is believed to be the only 1550 NM high performance LiDAR capable of working behind the windshield. We're talking about inside the car folks, and that's a big deal as far as I'm concerned. I've seen a lot of cars that have the LiDAR on the top. Well, that's great. It's a great viewing point from there. It can see everything, but what happens if a leaf blows in front of it or bird poop lands on it? or somebody messes with it. That's all possible being on the outside. You don't have to worry about any of that if it's on the inside of the car. AI CEO Matt Fish said, we are pleased to announce the first product from the Foresight Flex family, a mere four months after unveiling the initial reference design. Now I was impressed by these numbers. Apollo supports up to 120% horizontal view, 30% on the vertical view, and check this out, distance, 
325 meters. Folks, that's over three football fields it can see. I mean, even on a clear day, I don't know if we can see that well, and we darn sure can't see that well during a hard rain or thick fog or a whiteout during a blizzard. It can now, I got to be honest, I'm not real comfortable with giving all my trust to an autonomous driving vehicle, but when I consider the fact that it can see through all that crap, three football fields out there, that does make me feel a bit more secure. So the company hasn't got any contracts that I see right now. They are working on proving their product and they have done that. I would expect contracts to be coming up here soon, but still, I think this stock is going to move because the technicals are warming up and I just get the warm and fuzzy from technicals. So let's go check out this chart now. So let's take a look at both stocks. We'll look at the common stock, ticker LIDR, and we'll look at the warrant, ticker LIDRW. And we're going to do this on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. We're looking at the common stock first. This is LIDR. We're looking at a four hour, six month view. Just yesterday, we had our all-time low. It was our 52-week low. She's at 91 cents. Six months ago, it says she hit a high of $16.28. Don't you believe it? We had a reverse split in December of 1 in 30, which means the price should have jumped 30 times from wherever it was. That's only a 100% jump right there. That is not the split. So what they did is they adjusted the chart. What that means is that everything behind the reverse split has been multiplied by that ratio of 30. So if you want to know what the true high was on this day, divide $16.28 by 30 and you'll know what the high was. The good news is everything in front of the reverse split is still right. We don't have to use any extra math to read this. So she came down fast and furious and fell down to this strong support right there. And she's been on this for quite a while now. And when she fell down to it, she broke her trend. She was in a downtrend, now she's in a sideways trend. That's half the battle right there, quit falling. She was on this for quite a while, and then our 200-day SMA, which was falling fast and furious, started to change its radius. It's not as steep anymore. Now it's got the price's interest. The price jumped up there and tagged it. Just poked it came down just a little bit, a controlled descent, then jumped back up there. Now, this is where the problem begins. She thought she could stay up there. No, that's too steep. That's a slippery slope. You try to stay up there now, you're going to slip and fall, and you're not going to have a controlled descent like you did here. You're going to topple all the way down like Jack and Jill, and that's what it did all the way back down to this uh, strong support. Then it came back up to the 200, tapping it. Then it did a serious crouch, came way down deep like a cat would do before it jumps high, and that's exactly what it did. Lots of boosting power, broke through the 200 with a big long wick, came down no lower than where she started from, sitting on an SMA and pursued her climb. We had a big rip there, jumping from $1.37 up to $2.13, coming back down to the nine day SMA, falling to the 200, struggling with it, falling under our strong support, down to that low bubble, and now off of our 52-week low, our all-time low, she is bouncing and starting to climb. Now, this doesn't show a lot of heat. It doesn't show a lot of strength, but it looks good to me because of that 52-week low bubble. This is one of my inklings. Now, looking down at our oscillators, she looks like she is recovering. Looks like she is changing her trend right now, and I'm primarily getting that feeling because of these two oscillators. This is my PPO, percentage price oscillator, a lot like your MACD. You read them the same, you want that blue line on top of the other line, and you want them pushing up. Well, this is climbing, we got green bars accumulating, RSI is pushing up from the floor. Wow, it was down there at 32, and it is now at 51, which is still a bit cool, but that's a big climb. But it's these two that have caught my attention. When I see my ADX, this is what I like to call trend continuation. The only thing this is good for is a straight line. It's not about if it's going up or down or sideways. We don't care. All we care about is a straight line. Whenever the line is straight, 
whatever trend is on the chart is continuing. So if you have an uptrend and a straight line down here, as long as that trend continues going up, your line stays straight. When this line changes, when it changes, your trend changes. It was coming up because it was falling. Do, 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 do. Right there when it turned green, you see this change direction. Then it, it started to fall again. It changed direction. Well, when you see the PPO blue line going up and you see the ADX red line going down and they are spreading apart from each other, guaranteed 100% your price is rising. And all it takes is for either one of these lines to change their direction in any direction and your climb has stopped. So if you're looking for an exit sign, Working with either one of these is really, really good. Volume, not a lot of volume to talk about here, folks. We had a lot of volume back here when she was surging over the 200. Not a ton right now. Coming on down to that 20-day, one-hour view. So we've got a high 20 days ago of a buck seven nine. Fell down to that strong support and bounced off of it. Then hit her head on the 200-day SMA. She was trying to get over it, but could not find the strength. All of these SMAs are coming down on her head, pushing down. So we expected the price to come down with it until the SMA start to turn. Now, right here, everything looked like it was negotiating a deal to start climbing, but it didn't do it. Something went wrong. She fell underneath our strong support down to that low bubble. She is now breaking through the 50-day SMA. She's gotten on top of all the SMAs except the 200, and she is climbing right now, looking good. Now, I said she didn't have much volume. Well, it wasn't much compared to the others in the big picture, but as you can see, her volume was pretty strong today compared to other days. There were bigger spikes on other days, but congestion-wise, there was a lot of volume here. And our oscillators, we still have our spread, don't we? Our PPO is going up the blue line and our red line is going down. Guaranteed, 100%, our price is climbing. Our MACD has just crossed the signal line and we have a couple of green bars up there, though they are diminishing in strength right now, but our RSI is climbing and it is up there at 55. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. So here she is teasing the 200 day. She gave it a tap. We got a big rip and back down to home. Had this crouch before the pounce. She's come back down, tapped onto the 200, and now she's going sideways, looking like she's probably waiting for these SMAs that are crossing the 200 to give her some support. They come up underneath her. It gives her a place to bounce off of, and that's what it looks like is going on here. She pushed down, trying to hit the 50 with that spike. Couldn't do it. Got it with this solid bar, and she's pushed off of that. Looks like she's starting her climb. Our oscillators, our PPO has just had a bounce off, and it is starting to climb. Our MACD is trying to do an imminent crossover right now and coming up out of the red. And our RSI is a bit cool. It's at 54, but it is climbing right now. But you can see our 200-day SMA on our short chart here has just gone flat. And you hear me tell you over and over and over again, the best time for a breakout is when the 200-day SMA levels out and goes flat. When did she make her serious lurch and jump? When it went flat. There was just a little bit of tilt to it. She's gotten up there and right now, dare I say, it is completely flat. I think this is going to take off tomorrow morning. Now let's take a look at that warrant. Yeah. This is L-I-D-R-W. I've got this opened up to the 30 minute. Let's take a look at the uh, four hour. So we have had a big drop here from about 4.8 cents down to a low of double zero two. Folks, that's very, very dangerous for warrants. Warrants are not supposed to go under a penny. If they go under a penny for too long, there is a chance they could be yanked off the market permanently, just taken away, and you don't get anything for your warrants if you're holding them. Well, she bounced off of our 200-day haul, which penny stocks love, folks. The 200-day haul is just like your 200-day SMA. It's got as much authority on the board as the 200-day SMA. It's got 200 days of data 
all wrapped up inside of it, but then puts more credence on current prices. So you end up with two different strong long-term lines on your board. And look at the way this penny stock is respecting that 200 haul, laying on it all the way until she got to the 200, bam, and she broke away. 200 SMA that is. And then she came back down. So we had a nice rip here going from 007 in the next ooh, five days up to uh, single zero three. So call that from seven to 30. So you're looking at 450% gains right there. She came back down in a controlled descent right? She fell to the 200, not through it, blasting away. No, she landed on it. She's negotiating with it, biding time for these SMAs to get in the right position. Well, here comes our nine day SMA. Our 20 has just turned around. I see we have a hook up off of our 50 and we're waiting for our 200, but our price has jumped on top of all of these. It is on top and ready to run oscillators every single one of them is showing recovery right now all of them are pushing up now you got to remember with warrants you do not need millions of shares to move chances are it'll be a rare day when you see a million shares move on a warrant it can happen but it normally doesn't normally it's just a hundred thousand two hundred thousand and it can be a lot less than that and you can see a warrant run thousands of percent when the stock only goes up 20 30 40 percent the warrant will run like crazy. Personally, I like to trade warrants. One word of advice though I have to give to you. Make sure you are monitoring your ask and your bid up here. Because of the liquidity problems, there's not as much trading going on with the warrants. You can easily see a big spread on the ask and the bid. The price may be down at one and a half cents. And you see the ask is 10 cents. And you're going, oh my God, a penny to 10? Nobody's going to buy that. You'd be amazed. And you'll watch it jump from a penny to 10 cents, just like that. And you're going to get all excited. Go, oh my God, I just made 800, 1,000% gains. Hold on there, buddy. Put on the brakes. Look at your ask and your bid. Has the bid changed yet? Or does it still say a penny and a half? probably still says a penny and a half, even though the price is up at 10, but that was one buy. Get a couple more buys at 10 cents, the price, the bid will go up. But what you'll normally see is negotiations. Between a penny and 10, there's a lot of room and you'll see the price drop to somewhere in between a penny and 10 and that drop will be where the bid goes. And it may drop to five cents and you were down here at a penny. That's a 500% gain that you can take right now. Now you don't have to sell everything, sell half of what you got. Get back your money, get back some profit and let the free shares run wild. Last thing I'm gonna leave you with is a choice, an option. Since we're looking at a LiDAR company, I figured I'd let you know there was a LiDAR company in the news today, ticker L-A-Z-R. They have come out of research and development and have moved into production and they are now installing their LiDAR on Volvo automobiles. And on the back burner, they have a contract with Mercedes-Benz in case that interests you. And don't forget to check out CYN. They make those autonomous vehicles for inside factories and warehouses, ticker CYN, ticker L-A-Z-R, and of course, ticker L-I-D-R. Boy, you got a lot of due diligence to do now, don't you? Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.